I like to tinker and find out how things work and I've done a number of these power station reviews so this time I want to review this one from the inside and I also want to teach you how to take things apart even if you don't know where to start. So the first thing to do is to drain the battery down to zero and if you don't know what this is, this is a portable battery unit that can provide AC and DC power. It's a brand new product from GrowWatt called the Vita 550. And what I'm doing here is a full discharge through the AC port at its maximum continuous rate of 600 watts. I've actually done this a bunch of times and I usually get between an 85 and 86% inverter efficiency, which is pretty good. So when you're taking things apart, always look for visible screws. And the only visible screws I see on this unit are behind this handle here, which is actually a very nice handle, by the way. It has these rubber stops to hold it down. But these are T10 screws and we need to take those out. And as always, I recommend a refrigerator magnet to keep track of your screws. So this is not coming off. Obviously there's more screws under here that we can't see. And typically they hide the screws under a rubber or silicone cover like this nice one right here or the feet on the bottom or the stickers. So I'm gonna use my pry tool. And if we're fortunate, this is not stuck down by adhesive. And it's coming off. You always wanna go slow. Oh, look at that. It's not by adhesive. Ooh, I like this. With all the screws out, we want to go slowly, but I think the top should come off now. Remember to always go slow on something you're not familiar with, and if you find more resistance than you're expecting, double check and look for more screws or other connections. So what we have here is the top. This is a wireless charging pad with the handle. You can see there's just this little bit of circuitry down here. This is one of the best wireless charging pads I've used in a power station. I have the iPhone 13 Pro that has a big bump on it because of the camera lenses, and I don't have to get this just perfectly right. Just put it on here anywhere near this circle, and it starts charging. Otherwise, Ones, I feel like I have to mess with it and get it just perfectly right. All right, I got all the screws out. Let's take a look at the wireless charging from the opposite side and take a look here. There's actually three separate charging coils, not just one. And that's probably why I was getting such a good result at getting my phone kind of nearby that circle in the middle. To hopefully expose some more screws, I'm gonna use a little bit of heat very carefully with a plastic razor blade. And my hope is that in this way, I can put everything back together again and you never know I'd opened it up. And I love the satisfying sound of adhesive peeling off. So after taking off the side sticker and the screws on the bottom, I can see that there are basically two halves to this plastic and it's time to pull it apart. It's supposed to sound like that. Nice having a nice pry tool like this. Just always go slow. There we go. So I'm taking off the various connections now and throughout this whole process, I'm being careful and not trying to do anything I'm not comfortable with. So we have the main components apart. On the top here is the inverter circuitry. This whole board has two functions. It converts DC power from the battery to AC power, and then it also converts AC power to DC. So when you have it plugged into the wall, it's gonna convert that wall outlet power to DC power so it can charge the battery pack. I mentioned I was getting good AC efficiency from this unit. Growot is one of the biggest solar inverter companies in the world, and they're getting into the portable power station market. So I imagine they're gonna use their tech from that area and put it into these devices. I was encouraged when I was using this to charge the battery from zero to 100%. It took me about an hour and a half on average for all the times I did it. This is actually lower than what they say in their marketing material where they say it takes 1.6 hours. One thing to note about this inverter and its design is that it doesn't have pass-through AC. So if you're charging from a wall outlet, this inverter is working to charge the batteries and those front AC plugs are not available. However, you can access the DC ports while it's wall charging. Next thing to notice is the battery pack itself. You can see that there's individual cells here. This is how most portable power stations are made. The Vita 550 uses 32700 lithium the iron phosphate cells and you can see the printing right on the side and even see that they were manufactured just a few months ago. These are standard cylindrical cells kind of like this one. This is called an 18650 but the chemistry inside of here is lithium iron phosphate. It's a super safe chemistry and has a very long cycle life. Growatt says this battery has a cycle life of 3,000 cycles. So a cycle is like fully draining the battery and charging it back up again. So very long lasting. This board on the top is the battery management system and you flip it on its side, you can see there are 28 individual cells and each cell has a capacity of 19.2 watt hours. So if we multiply 19.2 times 28, we get about 538 watt hours, which is what it says on the bottom sticker. On the front half of the clamshell, we have the screen, a light, three USB-A ports, one USB-C 100 watt power delivery port. Now note, this is only an output port. There are three AC outlets over here. And for 12 volts, there's these barrel ports and the standard car port. On the side is the inputs. You can charge by the wall, no need for a big power brick. You can push this button here to charge it at 500 watts, which is the fast charge, or push the button to charge it about half that speed 
Over here is the DC charging. I charged it with the GrowWatt 200 watt solar panel and it worked great, but you can use any solar panel you want up to 240 watts as long as it fits within the specifications. And you can charge by your 12 volt car port and the unit comes with all three cables to do that charging. And over here is this board. This board is the brains of the whole operation, managing the screen, all the outputs, the buttons, everything. It's also handling all of the DC conversions. This is where the battery pack plugs in. If you look very carefully up here, this is a wireless card. You can actually use a smartphone app to look at information and can control the Vita via Bluetooth locally or with Wi-Fi from really anywhere in the world. So before I took it apart, I tested out the app. Here you can see all kinds of uh, data, input settings, output settings on all of these screens. You can toggle on and off all of these, the inverter, the light, the DC ports. You can see the state of charge and the internal temperature over here and the guess as to how much time it has left either charging or discharging. And it has a unique feature I've not seen in other uh, power stations where you can remotely turn it off. And so it'll say here, do you want to turn off the device? And I can click OK. And you can see here, it just turned it off. And under settings up here, you can change all of these parameters. And probably the most important is that you can do a firmware upgrade with the touch of a button, and you can see I'm up to date. When it was still put together, the Vita weighed a little over 18 pounds. And because this is light and has the carrying handle, this is a power station you'd mainly use for portable situations, like camping or car trips. I've actually been trying to use this to keep my office off grid and then recharge it by solar. And it can run my laptop, extra monitor, charge various devices, and last for about a day and a half. But if you're looking for something that'll last longer and power bigger things in case of a power outage, then you might want to check out GrowWatt's bigger brother, the Infinity 1500. It has over 1500 watt hours of storage capacity and a 2000 watt inverter. Here I'm using it to power my full size fridge and if there were a power outage, I could run this and other things like a microwave or make coffee, things that a bigger inverter can run and run longer. Plus it still has all the standard DC ports. The 1500 can handle a lot more solar than the Vita. It can take up to 800 watts of solar. You can use any solar panels you want, but as an example, here Here's one with 800 watts of portable solar using GrowWatt's own 200 watt panels. So some final thoughts on the Vita 550. I like this power station. I like the way it looks. It functions well. I like the screen, even little things like it shows you the real time inverter voltage and frequency. I like that you can monitor the solar input remotely, even when you have it outside. So some things that I wish it had, I wish it had pass through AC and it could have a little bit of that UPS functionality. I also wish that it had an extra USB-C port because there's just so many devices these days that use USB-C to charge. The Vita 550 is on special sale right now because it's brand new. Check the video description. I'll keep it updated with the latest deals, any coupon codes that I know about. And now it's time for me to put all this back together.